ERC, quality service since 1972. Repairing TVs, console stereos, electronic musical instruments, pinball machines, arcade games, and more. Call 836-0454. Hello, I'm James Spann. This is the Weather Extreme Video, the morning edition for Wednesday, the 25th day of March. And we are getting set to today as we begin a major long-duration rain event. And down the line, we could be looking at the potential for flooding and severe weather. So a lot to discuss. Let's get right to it this morning. There's a look at the uh, Skycam shots, and we note rain on the lens coming from Gadsden. Uh, light rain falling in scattered pockets around the state this morning. Also, light rain falling in Jasper. That's the Sky Cam on top of the King Building. And up in Huntsville, same deal. Got light rain falling there. That's the view coming from, from uh, Memorial Parkway up in Madison County. Well, the initial upper low that brought the big blizzard to the Black Hills, uh, that's lifting north up toward Canada. And that means the front that's trailing that will be stalling out and uh, helping to set up this multiple-day rain event. Here's a look at the radar this morning at uh, 455. And you can see mostly light rain, but a few pockets of moderate rain. And we don't really expect any big problems today. No flooding, no severe weather. This is just the beginning of the event. Here's a look at the uh, watch warning map this morning. You can see that already we've got flash flood watches up for a large chunk of Mississippi. Inevitably, they will be needed here. Also, this flash flood watch is up for a pretty good chunk of Georgia as well. And uh, needless to say, we're going to have to deal with that. Out west, winter storm watches in mornings for a large chunk of Colorado. Down into Kansas, northwest Oklahoma, up into Montana. They're going to see some big snows up there while we deal with the rain and the severe weather. Rain? Yeah, you bet. Are you kidding me? This is the expected rain over the next five days, and this is suggesting six to seven inches here. And this is valid through Sunday evening. And again, we will have the risk of rain and storms on a daily basis through Saturday morning. And uh, the, obviously, flash flooding will be a concern and river flooding will be a concern. This will lead to major rises on state rivers this weekend and early next week. So if you've got property along the rivers, especially that are flood to proning or flood to proning, prone to flooding, it's early. Be aware of that. Now, that's the flood risk, the severe weather risk. There's a look at today's convective outlook, a slight risk all the way from the Rio Grande to Interstate 65. The higher probabilities for severe weather are really centered from near Selma back to the west, and I'm just not convinced we have any severe weather today or tonight. Uh, the, the parameters just don't seem that impressive. Having said that, we'll watch things carefully. Tomorrow, there is a slight risk over a pretty good part of Alabama, extending all the way back to Texas. I mean, we're talking the area from Anniston to Dallas-Fort Worth. And uh, it's going to be a case there where we've got that low-level boundary and a short wave coming through, and sometimes the low-level winds will be back around to the southeast and create a few rotating storms. I don't think that's the most significant threat during this event, but there could be a few severe storms tomorrow, so keep that in mind. Now, this is day three, Friday, and this is the most problematic period, uh, Friday afternoon, and especially for us, Friday night, as things really come together. And you'll see that modeling here in a moment, but already on day three, the guys have this big 30% area, and that's a very significant risk on day three from uh, Birmingham back over to Shreveport. And we are really concerned this could be a very significant threat. It might be a moderate or high-risk day and probably will be. And then Saturday, the threat, the uh, shift of the severe weather risk continues to the east. And in Alabama, the risk on Saturday is basically from uh, I-65 east. And this is effective Saturday morning at 6 o'clock. So really, Friday night, Early Saturday morning could be a rough ride here. We'll look at the GFS. This is the OZ run at noon today. And you can see a broad trough to the west. But again, that core upper low is lifting up into Canada. The surface low is on the Canadian border. And today should be wet. And the front just stalls out. Tomorrow should be wet. Now, again, there has been some hint that just maybe the heavier rain axis tomorrow will shift down to the south of here. We hope that's the case. 
uh, because there'll be certainly enough rain for everybody here over the next five days with some evidence of drying northwest of Birmingham. And if you are in Fayette or Jasper or Hamilton or Guin or Vernon, it might be a break in the rain during the day tomorrow, but it probably comes back tomorrow night. And again, wherever that surface boundary happens to be, there could be a few severe storms. I don't think it's a major problem, just the possibility is there. But Friday, here comes our new low developing near Tyler, Texas. We'll go to Friday night, and this is the problematic period there. You can see that very vigorous upper-level trough to the west. Screaming wind fields, the deep surface low under 1,000 millibars is north of Memphis, a very favorable position for severe weather down here. Note the big snow back in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. How about that for March the 27th and 28th? And then Saturday, the surface low lifts up to near Chicago, and the dry slot gets in here. So the latest run really suggesting the main window for severe weather here would be from 6 p.m. Friday evening until 6 a.m. Saturday morning. Look at the instability values. This is uh, Friday evening. Surface-based Cape values over 2,000 joules over West Alabama. Goodness gracious. That's problematic, and this is problematic. The EHI, Energy Helicity Index, an excellent severe weather indicator, showing values over 2.0, and that is very high. So, again, we're probably looking at all modes of severe weather. Initially, the supercells with potential for long-track tornadoes, and then ultimately it rolls into a squall line at some point way after midnight Friday night into early Saturday morning. So, again, this is a good time just to... Not panic, but review your severe weather plan and be sure your weather radio is working and all that. Uh, Sunday, we're dry slotted. Uh, the storm lifts out. Uh, be cooler, but nothing extremely cold. Uh, the high probably close to 60, and then Monday, we're dry. But we note that storm already rolling out of the Plain States. And by golly, Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock, pretty good looking trough. And we got a cold front coming in here with a band of showers and thunderstorms. Uh, for now, our forecast does not mention this, but if this keeps up on the next run, we'll probably have to include that for uh, Tuesday of next week. Let's go deeper into the uh, period here. This is April 3rd, negative tilt trough, stormy weather there. A couple of days later, April 5th, hey, it turns cold if this is right. There's your late season cold snap, 540 line down to Birmingham. Again, I, I know that a lot of the growers are very interested in this, and just be aware, I think we've got one more, at least one more, where temperatures are going to be down there at or below freezing, and there's one example of why we think that. And then uh, four days later on April 9th, another trough, another set of storms, and more cold air coming in behind that. In fact, that thing looks like a pretty good snow for Memphis, if this is right. On April 9th. But we all know this is voodoo out here. We're not trying to be specific, we're, but we're just looking for trends. And no doubt the screaming message is that the active weather will continue deep into April. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video by 3.30 or so today. And, of course, we invite you to watch us if you're local to us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News at 5, 6, and 10. Again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.